Hello everyone and welcome back to the NPC Dungeon. A couple of weeks ago I talked a little bit about how I generate and counter ideas. So today's episode is going to go a little bit deeper and talk about how I generate story and campaign ideas. I won't be using my usual list format and instead I'll just be kind of talking, but either way I hope you still like it and hope it's still useful, so let's learn something. First, I want to say that everything I'm saying here is just my method and it's just my taste. And it might not work for everyone, but I still recommend it because you never know. Try it out. Second, my method is very hierarchical. I don't try to do everything at once. I find that overwhelming. What I'll do is I'll come up with a basic concept and then I'll branch out and branch out and start trying to come up with more specific arcs and adventures. And then I'll start putting encounters together. In this way, I kind of work from very broad to very specific. And it's more of a guiding principle than a solid rule because I'll also hop back and forth between encounters to adventures and adventures to encounters as I need to or as I run into roadblocks. Who knows? If I go to some other encounter or other world building idea or whatever, I might answer the question that was blocking me up in the first place. I may randomly have an encounter idea and then I may turn it into an arc and it may give me all new ideas. I also tried to stay pretty loose with my ideas at this stage in the very beginning early on concept campaign story building stage I'm talking about today and I do that so that I'm more open when new ideas come up. While working on a campaign and even while I'm not, if I have a random idea I'll just write it down no matter how bad it may seem. It may not be as bad as you think, and even if it isn't great, it may spark an idea that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise had you not acknowledged that initial progenitor idea. And that's the thing, just start somewhere. No matter what's in your brain, just write it down. You never know where it'll end up. It's actually a fun exercise to do every now and then to kind of just give your creativity a little bit of a workout and possibly even boost your confidence a little when it comes to joining new ideas. Now, if you're still hung up on an idea and you just can't convince yourself that it's not bad, I've been there, I think every creative person has, we are all too often, as the saying goes, our own worst critics, but if you find yourself here, just take some time away from it and look back on it later with fresher eyes. You're much more detached from it then and be more likely to be a lot fairer with yourself. But what about generating the idea itself? Well, let's be a little nicer to ourselves and call it a concept. It sounds a lot nicer, doesn't it? It sounds more tentative, like it doesn't really matter and you can change it later if you need to. And that's because guess what? You can. You're only brainstorming. Thinking about it this way and being a little more forgiving with yourself can make a world of difference. It can help you do what I said earlier on and be a little looser with these ideas and more accepting of what what your brain spits out. At least that works for me. Again, like I said, this might not work for everyone, but give it a try, you never know. And when you start thinking about it this way, you'll start seeing concepts everywhere. In casual conversations, in movies, you'll even hear them in songs. Here's an example. I was talking about Mix with a friend one day, and then I somehow happened across a weird old ad for Power Rangers, and it suddenly struck me that it would be funny to have a party of mimics and shape changer like creatures that end up being this team of heroes who could transform together into this huge mech thing because they're all shape changers and mimics. Even now, months later after this idea crossed my mind, it still sounds kind of weird, but that's fine, it's just a concept. It doesn't have to be great yet. I can branch out from here when I sit down to build it, asking myself questions like, how do they meet? What's the threat they fight? How do I handle the mecha type combat when they're together? And you'll find that the more often you look for the, these ideas out there, the more often you'll find them, and the more comfortable you'll get doing it. But if you're not comfortable doing that yet as a DM, that's fine too. There are still plenty of prompts online that you can find at the quick Google search. The DM's guide and the player's handbook are also a lot of fun, and they're full of little fantasy details that can provide you inspiration. Actually, believe it or not, it was a rogue archetype that inspired the villain and therefore really the main plot of my last campaign. Plus, I'm sure all the examples that I give in most of my DM advice videos can be really good inspiration as well, along with all the challenges that I often include in my videos. I know I have one in my video on adventure hooks and one in my video on generating encounter ideas in the very least. When you start seeking out prompts, guess what you're doing? You're actively trying to find inspiration out there in the world, and then being inspired by movies and shows and games and everything else that you can think of isn't really that far off. You'll get better at that the more you do it. But that's it for today. As always, thank you for watching and I hope you found this helpful. Also, if you liked my new style, let me know in the comments and be sure to check out this week's story. It goes way back to the first campaign that I ever pulled stories from on this channel and come back next week where I'll talk about how I give my NPCs stats and go back to Brynwyn to tell one final story about a character arc that she went through there. And of course, until then, let's learn something.